Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Magic QLC Plus. And today we're going to be looking at fixtures, what a fixture is, what it does, how it works, and how we can create some new fixtures. So let's get started. As you open up QLC Plus, you will automatically be started in the fixtures tab. You can see here we've got lots of tabs down here, which we will go through in later tutorials. So we start in the fixtures tab, and we can press the add fixture button up here. Well, you can do that and that brings up the add fixture dialog box. We covered this briefly in the last tutorial in what the channels are. So if we look here we can name these dimmers, they are wanted so there's a house light um, with addresses from one all the way, so let's say add 10 house lights at one channel each and just add those. So now we've got the 10 house lights we want to use. You can also add more complicated lights, say a 2 beam spot 260 LED. Or we can just add that in there. Again, you can assign channel numbers and names and tweak it to your heart's content. However, one of the lights which I want to add is a 2 beam 260 LED rather than a Q spot. So QLC Plus also comes with a fixture definition editor in case you haven't got the light in the system which you want. So in our example here we have a Qbeam 260 LED which is not part of um, QLC Plus at the moment. So we can scroll down here and we can see all the technical information for it including the channels and what each channel does. So we have two modes both basic and advanced. And then we scroll down, we get all, lots of different information for it. We keep going, we get to this bit. Um, so this defines what the DMX values do for each function. So on channel 1, pan just tilts it between those two degrees. Um, for the colour wheel, uh, you have functions. So that between 0 and 15, it's white. 16 and 30, it's red. So on and so forth. Manual for your lights will indicate what yours do. So if we go into the fixture definition editor, we can create a new light. This is a Chevette called a Q-beam 260 LED. And it's a moving head and off is me. And you can put your name in there or something else. So in here we can add the different channels. So let's start by adding the one at the top. Makes sense. So we got pan. I'm just going to control C and control V that. Um, it's pan. It's the coarse mode because we have both fine and coarse ones. So this will be the fine one. Um, so we can add values. So between 0 and 255. Um, what it says what it does. It goes between 0 and 540 degrees. So we can just paste that into the description. Uh, we can go OK, and that's the pan setup with accurate values for what it's going to do. So let's do a more complicated example. So if we go into, let's add a new channel, and let's create the color wheel, because it's a more complicated example. So color wheel, and it is color. Again, course mode, and in here we can now use the wizard. So the channels go up in steps of 15, so we can up the amount to 15, uh, 15 do, do, uh, it's 10 different channels, and we'll start at the gap of 1, just so all the numbers line up nicely. So we can go back into here, and oh look, the numbers don't quite work. Okay, so let's decrease this, and now most of the numbers work. Luckily we can change this after the fact. So we can just tweak for ones that don't work. So these are just colours, so let's name this colour, and that will name all of them. Let's press OK on that, and now we have all different colours. So we can again go into here, tweak that so it's down at zero. Uh, name the colour, the colour for the first one is white. So name that white, and we can pick the colour white to give it a nice visual representation of what's going on. <clears throat> Second colour is red, 
So we can add red, pick the color red, okay, and so on and so forth for all of these. I'm going to pause the video now and then uh, show you the end result. So now we're on the final one, which is rainbow or leering effect. But for color, we can't really pick a single color because it's multiple colors. So instead, we can pick a picture. So we can go into the picture and that will bring up the default location for where it stores its icons. And you can go into others to do, do, and I happen to know that there's a rainbow picture right in there, which is a nice rainbow icon rather than having a single color. So that's it for the color wheel. Now we've added all the different channels. Um, just need to check for all, all the right values. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait a minute. The rainbow color goes between 136 and 255, so we just have to change that. So just double click on there, change that to 255. There we go. Now all the values match. Press OK. And now we have our two channels. Now I'm going to go through and add all the channels so you can see the final results and how to add them to the modes. So now I've finished adding all of the different values. So we've got pan and fine pan and tilt and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> we can now create the two modes. So here I've created two modes one called basic and one called advanced. All I did to do that was press the plus button, then name it. So let's call it, uh, let's make the basic one again. So we go basic, we can add the channels, and then we can look through here. I just scroll up to the top so it's easier bit to see. We can see that one is pan, two is tilt. So we can go what? One is pan, two is tilt, color wheel three, rotating go rows, oh. rotation go rotation, prism, dimmer, slow control. And then in here we can adjust the channels. So if I got those two the wrong way around, we can flip those out. And we've now created the channel. Um, heads are different options for if you have more complicated lights with sets of bars and you only need particular channels to turn on for the particular heads. And then physical, you can add the physical information for the particular light. <clears throat> so in the manual, we have the physical dimensions of it and all the technical specs further around the document. So we can add all of those in to create the final light. So if we open up this one, here I've added in all the different technical information for it so it's fully accurate. And that's it. So now we've created our thing. So we need to save that. So I'll just save it where it was. So we'll give it a nice naming convention. Chavant QBeam 260 LED. And all we need to do now is get that into our main program. So what we need to do is if I open up an explorer window, so this is the place where I've saved the Cubeam file. So for my particular um, place, this is in users, my user, then within my user it is QLC plus fixtures. And here are some custom lights that I've already created in there. For Mac and Linux, it will be slightly different. I've had no experience with Mac, but I know for Linux, you have to be able to see hidden files and folders. Then it's called .qlc plus rather than qlc plus in the user folder. So now we can just copy and paste that into there. Open up qlc plus. Um, so if we try to add a new fixture, and oh look, it's not appeared. What we need to do is to re. I'm not going to bother saving the changes, so I'll just reopen that, um, add a new fixture, go up to Chavant, and the Cube Beam 260 LED is now there with both modes, and we now have all the controls that we need for creating the light. So that was fixtures. I hope this has been useful and helpful to you. If there's anything you'd like me to particularly cover on how to use QLC Plus, please leave a comment in the comment section below. 
please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see the new ones as they become available. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.